are you also one of those people who never have test ether? Are you always begging everywhere? Hey, please, can I get some test ether so that I can test my code? Wouldn't it be great if we can just use the network and run it on our local machine? Wouldn't it be great if we can play God mode with the blockchain on our local machine so that we can test much more easily? What's up, clubbers? GM, GM, GM. Welcome to Web3 Club. And in today's video, we are going to learn how do we fork blockchain networks we will also learn why do we need to fork them what use cases they provide how is forking better for us and how can it make our lives easier but before we get started please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't if you spot a mistake in this video please let me know in the youtube comments if you want to send me a message for consultation for video sponsorship my email address is in my youtube profile and if you have a specific question come join my discord server there are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out all right with that said let's get started First things first, we need to install Hardhat. Now, how do you go about doing that? Simply go to this website hardhat.org. Just click on this button, get started. It will take you to this documentation and here there's an installation thing. Just click on that and it will take you completely on how to install Hardhat. It of course requires that Node.js and NPM is installed on your machine. I'm going to assume that you already know how to work with terminal and how to use Node.js or NPM for running commands. So I'm not going to go through over them, but I'm just going to use them how to do it. You can of course copy what I've done, but if you want to have a proper understanding of those things, please let me know in the YouTube comments and I'll try to make a video on that. All right, so once you have Hardhat installed, you will go and basically create a folder. So you can see that I have uh, an empty folder over here. And now I'm just going to write npx hardhat in it. So what this will do is it will create a new hardhat folder for us. It will initialize this current folder as a hardhat folder. It will basically write some, some code that, you know, some boilerplate code that we can use to run hardhat over here. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter now. And I'm going to say yes to everything. And I just want to create a JavaScript project. I don't want any bells and whistles over here. Uh, this is the project root, which is fine. And the, I will add the git ignore file. Now it is, it is asking me if I want to install a bunch of other tools and I do want to install them. So I'm going to press yes. Now we just wait for installation to complete. Once the installation is complete, this is what this will look like. Now, if I were to open this folder in sublime text, now that it is open in sublime text, you can see that there are contracts, node modules, scripts and test. We're not really concerned with any of these today. Uh, the only thing that we will basically probably need is this hardhat config.js. Now this is the file which hardhat basically uses to run whatever commands that we run. So it acts as like the settings for our hardhat. Hardhat itself comes with a great feature called running a node where we can simply run a node on our local host. So I can just write npx hardhat node and it'll start a node on my local host. It's my own private node with these keys that I already have access to. I can go to a new tab and connect to this node with hardhat console command with network being local host. Once I connect, I have access to ethers uh, as the as a variable and I can simply do whatever with it now. So I have provider dot let's say get balance and i can simply copy this account let's say account number 17 and paste it over here and it will give me the balance of this which is like some big number but if i copy this address which has this this balance and i paste it over here it will give me the value zero because this is my local blockchain and there is there is no eth assigned to this address on my local copy now what if i want to fork the ethereum mainnet i want to run a local blockchain but before i start everything in the past is taken from the real blockchain now how do i do that so for that you will need the rpc url of a blockchain node generally people get it from either big rpc providers like infura like alchemy you can also host your own node and that own node will give you an rpc url that you can use there are a bunch of ways to do that. So I'm going to just uh, exit from this console and I'm going to run the node again with a fork argument. And this time the 
URL that I will give is cloudflare-eth. Sorry. Dot com. All right. So Cloudflare provides us with a free Ethereum RPC URL, which is this. So I'm just going to fork the Ethereum RPC and press enter. And once this connection starts up, we again, you know, have a blockchain node that is running. We can again connect to it with this console. Now, let's say I want to have the balance of this address. I write this method and press enter. This time you will see my balance is not zero. It is in fact point something, 0 0.013, I believe, uh, which is different. 0.17, okay. So I have 0.13. Uh, I think it will be 0 0.17 once it refreshes again. Uh, it is basically getting some money in, sending some money out. So it sort of keeps changing. This time, if I copy this address, uh, number 18, and see if the balance is there, the answer that we get is yes, we have balance again. So this way, what we have is we have basically forked the blockchain and we have provided ourselves with some test ether so that we can run whatever we want to run. All right. So this way, it really makes it much easier to test our code against the real blockchain code, but without requiring any ethereum or test ether or test tokens of of your choice you don't really need a faucet now you have thousand eth at your disposal now you can go through this url and see that there are a bunch of other ways to put this in action one is like you can just copy networks and pay, get the url from here and then just simply paste it over here like this and then uh, hard hat you don't need to provide with a fork url you can, it will simply read that url from here so for our case for cloudflare what we would do is write cloudflare hyphen com right and this is how you use that forking in here so i can simply close this and run this node like this without uh, specifying the fork url and it will read this url from here okay so let me just do that and again i forked the ethereum chain and I will simply call whatever I want to over there. So I can connect again with this. And this time, if you see the balance for that 467 URL, you will see it's 0.19, which is, I think, 0.19 over here. 0 0.22, it keeps changing. That's what I was saying. But yeah, uh, this is how we are able to fork the Ethereum blockchain. Now we can run whatever we want on this forked version. So the first question, how do we connect Remix to this simply go to remix.ethereum.org if you don't know what remix is remix is an ide for writing solidity code for writing smart contracts on web now let's say you have a contract let's say you just want to use the storage contract uh, simply go here uh, compile this once compilation is done go here and then in the environment instead of remix select hard hat provider all right and just let this be like this because we have not changed the default setting this is how it will connect but basically this is where uh, you can find the data you can see that you know this is running at 127.0.0.18545 which is exactly what is written over here so, so remix will try to connect with our hard hat now once the connection is made you can see that uh, our remix is making a bunch of calls to the network uh, now we can simply go ahead and deploy this uh, the deploy deployment is in process and the transaction has succeeded and you can see that the transaction did succeed it has shown up over here and we can simply interact with it like this so just we can store something let's say a value 34 we click on retrieve and 34 is coming back and the transactions are also you know you can see them over here so if i call retrieve you can see again and I call retrieve again. This is how it basically works. So this is how you connect Remix to this. So now why will you want to do this? Let's say you want to create a flash loan. For that, you need to connect to Aave. For that, you need to have the Aave code running on your chain. So you can either fork Aave, Aave's code, run it and then populate it. Or you can simply fork the main net. Make sure that your code is running correctly with Aave alongside. Make sure that it is calling the right things and everything and you can do it in the sandbox on your own local machine similarly if you want to write arbitrage bots you will need to integrate with multiple dexes and this is once you fork a chain you will have all the dexes running 
on the chain itself so you can simply check whether it's working fine or not similarly if you want to interact with any other deployed smart contracts forking will help you a lot you can of course get test eth or test matic or test whatever token of choice of your chain and then run it on your test net figure it out but you don't really need to do that until you know you are at a stage where you want to check this out publicly so before you know you put that out on on the web you you should basically fork it and then run it like this and then figure out okay this is the problem this is the bugs we had an alpha release a beta release and then put that on testnet that way you don't even need a lot of test eth or test tokens similarly if you want to do some automation or integrate with oracles this will be a much better easier way to do it now if you're testing with oracles there's one thing that you need to figure out oracles also give you a callback now that will not happen because this is running on your own local machine what oracles do is they connect to the public blockchain and then give them a callback so you will not be able to get a callback but what you can do is impersonate the callback calling user and then send a callback by yourself whenever you need it uh, to do that you have this uh, impersonation uh, impersonating accounts option over here so you can basically go ahead and impersonate this specific account or whatever account and then send transactions from that in your local network of course this thing only works on local network if it worked on the public chain you know the all hell will broke, break loose this is how you basically impersonate account it's not that difficult simply just run this specific code you get an impersonated signer and then basically make transactions with that signer all right so now let's do one thing let's create a smart contract which figures out what is your erc20 tokens balance any erc20 token that we give so uh, let's just go ahead and first create a new contract over here which is let's say called checker dot sol and then we create a contract called let's say checker and there's let's say one function only which is check <laughs> all right and this this accepts an address of token and address of user okay this is a view function and it returns sorry returns u int 256 and i will need to import ierc20 over here so i have imported ierc20 over here and i also need to make this method public um, and then i just write ierc20 underscore token so i basically wrap the token as an ierc20 token and then call um, balance of and of the user and i basically return this so this is a simple method uh, you basically send the the address of the token and the address of the user and we figure out what is the balance of that all right so i just go here i select hard hat provider which is already selected i find checker over here and click on deploy now once the deploy completes you can see that contract was deployed over here and i'll just increase the zoom so you can see that you know we have these options now let me open etherscan go to tokens and let's say i want to check top tokens okay and i want to check uh let's say matic all right now on matic uh what i can do is i can copy the matic uh contract address and copy it like this and basically let's say paste it over here in the token and i want a user with with a with a lot of matic all right <laughs> so pos taking contract has a lot of matic all right so what is the address of that i believe this is the address so i've copied the address and i paste it over here now if i press call it is making a call you can see that it just made a call now it took time because it made the call to the ethereum network via cloudflare because it was just figuring out hey what's the value all right uh, and it returned with this value it starts with 368 and then 293 if you check over here it is also 368 293 9629 you know 9629 so it's the same value that is getting because this is essentially making a call to the cloudflare eth's rpc url which is connected to ethereum so if we had to create a bot which basically checked the current price or current holdings of somebody and if that holding is more than whatever we want to run something we could have done it via this like this is how we would have tested out then put it on the main network and then on the main network it would work seamlessly because we basically test it out on the main net so this is how you do testing of a 
code on mainnet without actually deploying to mainnet or deploying to testnet without requiring a lot of ether or whatever is the native token of that chain uh, to do those testing. I hope this video was useful to you. If it was useful, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If you have a specific question, if you found a mistake or figure out a new way to do this, please let me know in the YouTube comments. If you want to send me a message for sponsorship, for consultation, please send it to my email address. My email address in the, is in the about section of my YouTube page. And if you have a specific question, come join my Discord server. There are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out. I hope to see you again next week. Till then, bye-bye.